All the characters in the story are over 18 years old. My sister Amanda laughingly said that it was so, brother, here's our story. It seems strange to me that she could be so cheerful, considering the circumstances. We were at the funeral. But no, she did not believe that I could return to the same Greek island for the same two weeks. This is the last week of April and the first of May, staying in the same hotel in the same room for 14 years in a row, and that this year would be my 15th trip there. She was sure that there was a woman who was the reason for what she had always considered my mysterious behavior. And now, due to this sudden change in circumstances, she cheerfully announced that she was determined to find out. I never liked my brother-in-law. He was a bad and vicious man who grumbled and complained about everything my sister did. They lived separately and had no children, but they had one common interest. Both were fond of horses, the sister, the ones they rode, and the son-in-law, the ones they bet on. Both types of horses are terribly expensive, but they were both well-qualified professionals with successful business careers, and their incomes could easily support their interests. Sudden death always brings grief. Although I have long suspected that most people experience sadness for themselves, not for the deceased, so when my son-in-law died suddenly, I was worried exclusively about my older sister. But I shouldn't have bothered. She quickly recovered from the initial shock and already during the funeral seemed to be the cheerful sister I had always known. After all these years when she was my older sister, she was sure that she could still read me like a book and now, due to new circumstances, she could devote more time to me, her only living relative, her younger brother. Maybe she could read me like a book, but there were chapters in this book that an older sister absolutely should not read. But when she said that, I was glad that she had enough care to try to do it. The funeral and financial matters were quickly sorted out. And three days before my annual trip to the resort, she announced that she would go with me to Greece, where the whole truth of my trips there over the years would be revealed. The truth was pretty mundane. I was a wildlife photographer. Orchids were my specialty. And returning to the Greek island with its more than a hundred different species of flora and fauna was an obvious choice for a person interested in photographing all the orchids in Europe. After several trips, I fell in love with the island and its inhabitants. As befits a person making decisions and making a career in the top management of the company, my sister has already delved into the details of my trip. I was inclined to call it an intervention, but I was glad that she had something to distract herself from recent events in her family. And before I knew it, she had converted the Suzuki Jeep that I always rented into something more. Her conversation with my good friend Michael, a somewhat puzzled hotel owner, about the beds in my room made him think about what was going on too. By the way, I was also wondering what was going on and later when we arrived on the island by plane. I was surprised to find that we were both shown to my usual room in the quiet old wing of the hotel that I always reserved. My surprise was caused when I saw that the usual sofa and my double bed had been replaced with a sofa and two single beds. Amanda decided that we would share a room with her, but as I will explain now, this was not the first time. As I said before, my sister thought she could read me like a book. So, the circumstances when she took responsibility for me and my life, when she put two beds in my room, reawakened the feeling of a younger brother in me and opened pages in my subconscious that remained hidden and unread for more than 30 years. These pages, I felt, should have remained unread by her. It was a case caused by something I did in our distant past. We lost our parents when she was 22 and I was 18. It happened suddenly as a result of a traffic accident. We had no close relatives. And Amanda was forced to deal with my upbringing and my parents' business. This was undoubtedly the preparation in life that later led her into business. We lived together in the apartment that Amanda rented. The family home was too big for us, but fortunately our finances were safe and we were fine with the money. Naturally. We were thrown into a close relationship together, and the six years between us were not an obstacle to this intimacy. Like any other teenager, I knew about the weaknesses of my sister and all women in general, and my curiosity led me to spy on Daria whenever possible. Often, when we were lying together in the dark, each on his own single bed, separated only by an arm's length. Amanda was on a date with a man from the bank where she worked now. I was almost asleep when I heard her enter the apartment. For some reason, I do not know why, I did not answer when she said that she was at home from the threshold of the hallway. 
I struggled to stay awake while she did her chores in the bathroom, turned off the TV and lights, locked the door, and finally entered our bedroom. She went to bed, and listening to her deep and even breathing, I realized that she was soon fast asleep. But I couldn't just go to sleep. That evening we made love. Thoughts kept coming into my head. I was convinced that my older sister would get pregnant. Will I go to jail for this? That night I sobbed to tears and having no one to confide in, suffered for many weeks until one day it dawned on me. My sister could not be pregnant. I'm lucky. But one thought haunted me. Did my older sister still love me for what I had done? The shame and fear of losing my sister made me deny to myself what I had done that night in the apartment. For 30 years, I have successfully buried this incident in my subconscious, so successfully that the awakening of memories made me fear for my sister's intentions. Does she still love me, or is it time for me to pay back? The first days of our vacation together passed without any hints from my sister, and we could relax together while I showed her the island. She saw firsthand that there was no mistress waiting for me on it, and that, I think, opened the door for a cautious revival of our relationship between brother and sister. Did I say careful? Caution would be an appropriate description of my feelings. But Amanda seemed to throw caution to the wind and quickly returned to her role as boss, director, judge of everything, and, not least, big sister. It seemed that now, having lost her hopeless husband, she had to turn back the clock and take care of me again. Having had no successful long-term relationships with women in 30 years, I easily obeyed her wishes and realized that I had found my soul mate again. On the third evening of my vacation, after a successful happy day when, with her help, I found and photographed my 61st orchid species on the island, she insisted on treating me to dinner outside the hotel. After dinner and on the way back through the village, she whispered, We still walked together like in the good old days. And although I was suddenly and irresistibly glad, I also felt a taste of guilt in my mind, and in a moment of guilty weakness, I stopped and turned her to me, whispered that I needed to make a confession and that I should apologize to her for what happened 30 years ago. She said, This confession of yours has been waiting for so long. It will wait until we get to our room. So we continued our walk back to the hotel. We quickly got into the usual rhythm of relaxation, sharing a bathroom and a bedroom, and easily and without hesitation moved from one to the other. I had a chance to catch a few inconspicuous glances at her as she was getting ready for bed, and tonight was no exception. Careful, I said, it's very dark in here. Well, she said, that's the way it should be if we're going to discuss what's bothering you, brother. The resulting silence seemed awkward to me. Was your husband's funeral a shock to you? Maybe their cost, but we don't have a problem with money. I felt that she didn't want to talk about her dead husband, and I was looking for another topic, something that could bring us back to the light banter we usually enjoyed, but it was Amanda who broke the ice of silence. Why didn't you get married? You remember Dina, don't you? Dina was the least normal friend of my several failed long-term relationships with women. Dina? She said it with an echo of innocence bordering on sarcasm. I wonder what comment would follow from my sister. Was that the dark one? She paused for a moment and then continued slyly. The one who looks like me? I realized that she was right. Was I trying to recreate in the desire I felt for Dina the even greater desire I felt for my sister? My God. Even the names were almost similar. Did she suspect that I felt desire for her? I tried unsuccessfully to turn the conversation to her and joke back. Marrying him was my mistake, but what's done is done. Now we're back together, brother. I felt even sadder. Would my confession surely destroy the intimacy we had regained in recent weeks? Little sister, I said I have to confess something to you. Do I want to give it up so that we can forget everything and continue as before? She didn't say anything. She was good at interrogative silences, and after a while her silence made me talk pointless nonsense unconditionally, until I finally had to confess to her. Little sister, I want you to forgive me. In the silence that followed, I heard her turn to me and rustle the blanket. Give me your hand. I didn't understand right away, and she repeated her demand that I reach out and take her hand. The hand, she said softly. I reached into the darkness, found her hand, and immediately was transported back to our life in our youth in the apartment. 
her demand for darkness, taking hands when heavy worries threaten to overwhelm us. Well, she said, tell me what's bothering you, brother. No, I replied. No, I think it's better not to talk about it. Come on, she said. I think you need to talk it out. Tell me what you feel the need to confess. In the silence that followed, I was sure she could hear my heart beating, but at least she didn't let go of my hand in disgust. You remember? Do you remember? So you knew everything? Did you know what I did to you? I corrected myself. Did you know what I was doing to you? Did you know? She said flippantly. After that, I confessed to my best friend that she had the same experience with her younger brother. I asked, startled by her answer, Who knows about me? About us, you mean? And she smiled. No, dear brother, I can't tell you who I told about us, but be sure our secret is safe. I was puzzled and alarmed. This conversation, with a painful sense of guilt and shame over the past 30 years, was getting out of control, but somewhere inside I felt an amazing sense of relief when she kindly rejected my shame and guilt for what I had done then. You weren't the only one, brother. Don't tell me you've been tormented by this guilt for so long. Well, yes, of course, I still feel like I shouldn't have bullied you. She stopped as if she didn't know what to say, then hurriedly continued. But did it hurt you, brother? I don't know. Undoubtedly, the experience of communicating with you has influenced my interests. I realize that my friend Dina is surprisingly similar to her sister. But she was beautiful, just like you. Go on, brother. I have to admit that my attempts to play sleep games with Dina led to our breakup. Oh, you men are so insensitive sometimes. The poor girl could feel that you were trying to regain the intensity of your feelings. It's enough to make anyone feel inferior. But I felt that she also had something to confess, and she hurriedly continued. Obviously, shortly after I got married, I said some words in my sleep, and this ended the relationship with my husband forever. He never came near me again. You mean you were talking about us in a dream? In a positive way? It looks like it. No wonder he never liked me. When we share our thoughts in the dark, like now, we are in a state of equality, a kind of truce. This is emotional freedom for everyone, and we can say what is close to our hearts without hurting each other. Do you agree? And I confess that she was still in my dreams. Yes, I see my older sister in the same light. But do you still see yourself as my big sister? And again, she was silent. A sudden thought came to my mind, a thought so cynical and worldly wise that it could only be fueled by adulthood. Tell me, did you know that I came to you? Yes. But why didn't you tell me anything? Because I felt guilty too. I wanted to get my cake and eat it. And if I remember correctly, it was a very successful first attempt for you. And smiled. But if I had known about your guilt, I would have told you about my role in this many years ago. Did I misunderstand her? Was she looking for the completion of these untidy memories and not the beginning of something new? These thoughts overwhelmed me in a blind panic. Did I disgust her? I'm so sorry, Amanda. Forgive me for asking. I misunderstood. I can't bear the thought of us falling out. Can you forgive me and leave it as it is? There was a long silence. I think she paused and her words hung in the air. I think it would be better if I slept. If I'm going to sleep, well, then you'll figure it out, you see. My thoughts were racing, and I could barely think coherently. I'm tired, she said. You can pretend that I'm asleep. I lay in the dark with my heart pounding and tried to make sense of everything she had said. I could pretend that she was asleep. If she was asleep, I would have sorted it out. I was just as unsure now as I had been more than 30 years ago. Was that what she meant? If you were feeling depressed and unloved... I could. She paused, and I thought, how far can her fantasy take her? If you felt like an unloved little boy, I could give you the secret love that only a mother can give. To love you and lead you to her secret places. She left it for later, and we both lay in silence until she exclaimed, you see, what I said was true. We could always pretend. I had a laugh. Little sister, I think you are a very shameless woman. She immediately replied to me, not a shameless woman, dear brother, but a dirty girl. After long conversations, we made love again. After that, I no longer considered her just a sister. She was a true love friend.